The following program is brought to you by Caltech. Good morning. Uh, thanks, David, and uh, I will not make any joke or anything like this after you act. It's too, too tough to follow. So. And I want to thank you and uh, uh, your team and uh, the member of the Alumni Association Board and all the staff for making you know, your hard work and making this event and the previous couple of days a, a success. So it is my pleasure to welcome you to this event today. And I'm sure as you have discovered through the weekend by, by the lectures and so on, uh, the Caltech torch continues to, 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 to burn brightly and we are clearly thrilled to have our alumni uh, who carry the torch into the world to be back on the campus. So we are celebrating all of you today here, but we're also celebrating a group of very special alumni who are going to be inducted into uh, the Distinguished Alumni Group. And uh, this honor, the award, is the highest that the Institute can bestow on any of, on any of its graduates. So I'm going to start and introduce our first awardee. Our first award goes to Dr. Leroy Hood. And since he's a good friend, I will call him Lee, if you don't, if you don't mind, Leroy. Lee is one of the world's leading scientists in molecular biotechnology and genomics. He is the president of the Institute for Systems Biology, which he co-founded in 2000. The Institute, using new technology and a holistic approach, is helping pioneer the transition from reactive to proactive medicine. After graduating from Caltech in 1960, Lee went on to receive an MD from Johns Hopkins and later returned to Caltech for a PhD in biochemistry in 1968. He joined the Caltech faculty in 1970 as an assistant professor of biology and ultimately became the Ethel Wilson Bowles and Robert Bowles Professor of Biology. At Caltech, he developed several groundbreaking instruments, including an automated DNA sequencer that made the Human Genome Project possible. All those instruments were com successfully commercialized. He has received numerous awards, including the 2011 Russ Prize from National Academy of Engineering and the Heinz Award of Tech for Technology, the Economy, and Employment. He has also been inducted into the Inventors Hall of Fame. He is a fellow of the American Academy of Arts and Sciences, a member of the National Academy of Sciences, a member of the Institute of Medicine, and of the National Academy of Engineering. He is only one of 14 people in the country who have been, who have been or are members of all three academies. In his spare time, he has published over 700 peer-reviewed papers, co-authored several textbooks, received 22 patents, and played a key role in founding more than 14 biotechnology companies. I think he deserves to be a distinguished alumnus of Caltech. <laughs> Lee, please join me. Well, thank you very much. It's obviously a very special award. I will say being an undergrad, a grad, and a faculty member at Caltech certainly shaped my view of science, and for that, I thank Caltech. Uh, the decision to leave Caltech in 1992 was the most difficult I ever made, but it was the correct one for me because it led to what I'd like to say just a few words about a vision and a passion of how I see medicine becoming proactive over the next 10 years. My view is that it will be predictive, preventive, personalized, and participatory. My view in 10 years is that each of you will be surrounded by a virtual cloud of billions of data points and will have the wherewithal to reduce that enormous 
dimensionality, data dimensionality to simple hypotheses about health and disease. What is actually going to take us there? I would say there are four pillars to P4 medicine, as I call it, and my institute is interested in pushing all of them. First is the idea that biology is an informational science. That has enormous dimensions, but one of the most interesting is the incredible complexity of biology is a consequence of Darwinian evolution. And if you don't understand that, you don't have a prayer of dealing with the enormous signal-to-noise issues that are attendant in getting large data sets. A second point is that the correct way to approach disease now is to take a systems view of this disease, a holistic um, as opposed to an atomistic view of just what disease is. And this leads us not only to detailed understanding of disease mechanisms for the first time, but completely new insights into diagnosis uh, and into therapy. A, a third poll is actually uh, developing new technologies that will let us explore new dimensions of patient data space. Data space is infinite, so we have to mine precisely and exactly the data space we need uh, to understand certain aspects of the uh, complexity of disease. And the development of tools for genomics and proteomics and metabolomics and imaging and even measuring phenotype, those are all uh, central drivers in this opportunity. And of course, the final poll is developing the analytic tools that can let us take billions of data points and store them and analyze them and integrate them and finally fashion them into models that are both predictive and even more important for patients, actionable. It can tell you something that can really improve a patient's life. P4 medicine will give us two big opportunities in the future. It will demystify disease and transform the healthcare industry. Even more important, it will quantify wellness. And my prediction is, uh, in the next 10 years, we'll see the emergence of a wellness industry that will far exceed that of the current healthcare industry. In closing, I would say that P4 medicine has four striking societal impacts. Number one, it will transform the entire business plan of everyone in the healthcare industry over the next 10 years, and those that can't accommodate uh, will be the dinosaurs of the future. Number two, it will digitalize medicine. It will allow us to handle these billions of data points, and equally important, we will soon have iPods for healthcare that will measure our own physical parameters and give us instantaneous feedback on the optimization of wellness. Third, it's going to turn around the ever-escalating costs of healthcare dramatically, and I think do it in such a fashion that in the future we'll be able to export this P4 medicine to the developing world. And this opens up the possibility for a democratization of healthcare that was inconceivable uh, even five years ago. And finally, I would argue those uh, institutions and countries that adopt P4 medicine, it will be the source of enormous well, uh, wealth, both because of what wellness will do for society and the ability to create and fashion new industries around healthcare, and even more important, uh, wellness itself. What is exciting is most of us will see this. This, will, this is already happening. It will happen increasingly over the next 10 years, and there'll be a transformation of all of us, a movement from thinking mostly about disease as we get older to thinking mostly about wellness. Thank you. I have, um, I have known Lee for a number of years before I came to Caltech, and uh, I am always impressed how, how much he is on, on message. He's, and uh, he's always talking about P4 medicine, the four impacts on society, and that's why he's having so much impact, in fact, on medicine and society. So it's always great to, to listen to you, Lee. I mean, 